There's a series that we're going to be starting here on Category 5 Technology TV, and that is to do with advanced routing technology from Microtech. It's called Router Board. I want to show you this thing. This is a, a router board. Um, this one is called the HAP AC Router Board RB962UIGS. And it looks just like a just like a standard router, right? Look at that. But what is amazing about these boards, about these routers, about Microtik as a brand, is that they are a disruptive technology. You're familiar with disruptive technologies. These are innovators who come out and just completely flip the industry on their heads. What is amazing about Microtik is that the features of the firmware are not restricted. And what I mean by that is there are companies like Cisco, for example, who you have to pay licensing fees in order to get more kind of industrial um, business-like features and, and the high-end features. You've got to pay through the teeth sometimes for licensing to be able to unlock those software features. Now, Microtech has a different approach. They say, you know what, even if you buy our $40 router, we're going to give you the full software, everything. You're going to have access to everything. So the only limitation that you have with a Microtech is the hardware. Lucky for us, they have a gajillion of these kind of devices. They've got a, a wide range of hardware available to us. So with Microtech, the approach is instead to simply find the hardware that's going to meet your needs. So the reason that I've selected this one for the studio is because we have one, two, three, four gigabit Ethernet ports. We've got uh, a gig um, port for connecting uplink to our modem. It's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios, so I'm going to be able to kind of branch out and, uh, you know, like our Wise cams, for example, are on the 2.4 gigahertz band, so I'll leave those there, but I want to bring my smartphone and our laptops and everything over to 5 gigahertz because we're going to get more speed, and then we're going to presumably be able to free up that, uh, that 2.4 gigahertz band here at the studio. There are a couple of different things that are really, really neat about this device. I mean, they are really, really hardcore good quality, but they are about a tenth of what you would expect to pay for similar features. And I really, really mean that. I mean, you'll notice on the side there's a USB port. One of the first things that I ever did with a router board is I used that USB port, which by software, because it's not limited, remember? so. I wrote a script that could turn on and off the power to the USB port. Why would I want to do that? Well, USB is how many volts? 5 volts. I picked up a 5 volt relay. And I set it up so that a USB cable went into that relay and I could, in the software, turn off and on the power to that relay, basically tripping the circuit. So that relay then had the power cable, which was 12 volts, going to my modem. My router board was then, the software was checking every five minutes, is Google responsive, is Twitter responsive, is Facebook responsive, and a couple of other websites, including my own. Are they responding to pings? If they're not responding to pings, let's try again in five minutes. And if they're still not responding to pings, I'm going to cut the power on the USB port. And what that then did is it cut the power on the relay, which tripped the 12 volt signal to turn off my modem. And then it waited five seconds. I programmed that into this and then fired it back up again. The relay tripped back, the modem powered back on, and essentially what I had done is I'd unplugged and plugged back in my modem without ever having to be present or even know about it. 
as soon as the internet seemed to go down, because this is a very common problem at the time with my particular modem, I would have to power cycle that modem oh, uh, basically like once every few weeks. But by using a Microtik, I was able to do that programmatically using the USB port. So all that to say it's completely open in such a way that I can utilize all of the features of the router without being software restricted. Even to the point of I can program the USB port to power on and off my modem. Come on now. They're so cheap. They're like a tenth of the price of a Cisco, for example, with similar feature set. Uh, we do have links for you at cat5.tv slash microtik. That's M-I-K-R-O-T-I-K. They got to spell it weird so that our links will be weird for you. Um, because they don't have the software limitations though, I mean, you can do so very much with it. So over the course of the coming weeks, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting this up. This is, this is the one that I selected for the studio. I'm going to be setting this up as a basic router. So just basically what you would need for home. It's going to protect you better than what your ISP is providing for you, significantly better. It's going to be a lot more robust. It's going to give you a lot more control. But beyond that, over the coming weeks, we're going to learn how to use this to create things like a guest Wi-Fi that I control. So, well, but Robbie, my, my Wi-Fi uh, access point that the internet service provider gave me also comes with guest Wi-Fi. Well, yes, but do you have control over that? No. What I want to do is not only take that guest Wi-Fi and lock it down so that the, the people who are connected to my guest Wi-Fi cannot access my server, my internal resources, my printer. I want to lock that down. But also, I want to restrict how fast they can travel through my internet connection. In other words, I want to throttle their bandwidth. They're a guest. They're just using my internet. It's probably, to be honest, it's going to be one of the kids' friends with their Nintendo Switch playing some video games. But when they come around with their tablet and try to download videos, I don't want them to be milking my bandwidth and slowing things down on my network and uh, causing my VoIP to, to start buffering. So I'm going to be able to do that. We're going to be teaching you how to do that here on Category 5 Technology TV in the coming weeks. So consider this as a little bit of a preliminary introduction to this series. From there, we're going to be learning also how to lock it down so that we're blocking ads through Pi-hole directly on this device. And then we're going to take it one step further and we're also going to create probably what I would say is one of the best pornography could ever have on your home network on one of these. And that is going to be able to protect your children. Um, and maybe if you're working in a school in the education sector, it's a perfect opportunity for you on the cheap to be able to create something that is going to just absolutely protect your users. And, uh, and then it's also good in business and it allows you to be able to kind of control uh, what your staff are accessing and, and just making sure that it's not something that you would object to or that you don't want your bandwidth being used for at your office, let's say. You can use the web interface. I mean, this has a built-in web interface, but what's really, really cool about the Microtik, I'm going to say that a lot, aren't I? It's going to be my crutch. What's really, really cool about it? Well, there's too many things that are cool. I, I need to have a bullet list. Um, one of the things that I really adore about this is that there's also a piece of software called Winbox, which is available for Windows or Mac. However, it runs flawlessly on Linux in Wine. So it basically will run on all platforms. You're going to use the Windows version on Linux and it runs perfectly. Well, why would you want to use software when it has a web interface? The reason for that is because if you ever basically screw up and brick your device, make it so that it's inaccessible through the web interface, you can use Winbox in order to access it and you can recover. And it's just a simple tool that detects your router on the network and, uh, and lets you you uh, access it and configure it. And it's, uh, it's fairly robust as well. So we're going to go through this over the course of the next few weeks. And uh, I encourage you to follow the links at cat5.tv slash microtick if you're looking for a good, solid, 
home router, business router that's going to be able to um, give you some of those uh, features that are well beyond what you would expect for the price point. Just find one that has the features, the hardware features that you need because again, the software is not restricted. So if you need five gigahertz Wi-Fi, you need to make sure that you buy one that has five gigahertz Wi-Fi. The software is not gonna limit you that. It's whether the radio internally has support for it. They start like really, really cheap. You can get one for like 29 bucks or something and then they work their way up to a couple hundred bucks. And then you can even get into rack mount server units that are gonna be several hundred dollars and they've got the SPF and, and everything else. This one also has, uh, you've, got a, uh, you've got everything on here that you'll ever need. HAP is the one that I got. HAP is Home Access Point, I believe. So check those out, cat5.tv slash microtech, and uh, I will be demonstrating this over the course of the, the next several weeks. I wish I could show you the internal today. Unfortunately, because of limitations to our studio right now, I'm not able to bring it up on the screen. I'm not able to show you or teach you how it works. I really wanted to be there this week, folks. It's coming, and I can't wait. I'm gonna be teaching you a lot of stuff about these devices. They're really cool.